So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, first uh, breakout session on the, uh, let's use the acronym SRIA. So you have the title in front of you, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda. I will try to explain, uh, you know, where it fits in all the movement, uh, the movements uh, around uh, EOSC and, uh, and and uh, also make some links with other sessions uh, that will uh, occur uh, during the day. And uh, since uh, the, the EOSC uh, interoperability framework, uh, as was announced by, mentioned by uh, Catherine in her introduction, has been uh, published yesterday uh, and is now open for comments, uh, uh, there will be towards the end uh, highlights on the, the EOSC interoperability framework as it is so fresh. And uh, Oscar Korsha, who was one of the uh, of the uh, editors uh, of the document, will join us. I know he's in another meeting, but he will join us uh, during the call, uh, during the session, uh, and uh, be able to answer uh, questions. All right, so with that, uh, let's move into the, the presentation of the SIA. So, uh, Sarag, if you can go to the next slide, please. All right. So, first of all, uh, the, 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 I chose to the, this slide as an intro because this is the beginning. Uh, today is the beginning of a long journey, which will take us uh, uh, early October uh, in, with uh, the final version uh, of this document that uh, that is uh, just started to be developed uh, as we speak. Right, so uh, uh, there is not even a full draft as we speak today, uh, and uh, there will be hopefully there will be one by the end of the month that the executive board will be able to review, as well as the governing governance board a few days later, and then the the main part of what uh, uh, would lead us to to the uh, October will be an open consultation. Uh, over July, August, and September. So we know that there are vacation period at that moment in time, but we felt that uh, if we pick a three month window, it will give an opportunity to everybody to contribute. So, so bear with us, uh, this is just the beginning, but uh, we wanted to take the opportunity of this uh, consultation day to introduce uh, where we are, and, uh, and of course, more importantly, a point to the open consultation that will occur uh, over the summer. So next slide, uh, Sarah, please. All right, so uh, we're not starting from zero. So we put together a, a table of contents, which I will review very briefly. And uh, so first of all, of course, uh, yeah. So uh, before I get into the details of the table of contents, uh, First, uh, what is the audience? What's the purpose uh, uh, of this document? So I will connect it to what's going on uh, in general, but uh, at this stage, uh, looking at the table of contents, I just want to, uh, to share that this document will be for anybody, uh, anybody who is interested in EOSC. So it, that goes from, uh, the, of course, the European Commission and the Member States, but uh, to, the, to all the infrastructure people in charge of working in, within infrastructure or funding organization, uh, and of course, any scientist. So it's a challenge uh, in designing this document uh, to have a single document that will uh, be uh, uh, made available as a reference document for such a diverse uh, community. So uh, we have to have that in mind, and there will probably be an how to read section, uh, how to read this document section at the beginning to help people, you know, focus on the on the parts they're more interested in. But we have to have that into uh, into our brain, right? This document at the end of this year, uh, the the 1.0 version of the SRIA will be the reference document of what has been done so far and what we intend to do in the future. Uh, you know, related to EOSC. It's sort of a, 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 a snapshot of where we stand at, at the end of 2020. So uh, briefly on the table of contents, uh, introduction of uh, what's happening and the, and the impact of the, the rise of the digital age to, 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 the, 
to the movement towards open science. Uh, part two uh, connects uh, this overall uh, movement to what's uh, going on in Europe. Uh, the third makes a little bit of history uh, and reminds uh, everybody that we're not starting from scratch at the end of 2020, but the, the whole program has been conceived in 2015. It's been officially launched in 2018. We are ending the transition period, 2019-2020, and uh, we reach a sustainable uh, organization in 2021. Uh, the values and principle is where we are at the moment, what has been decided related to EOSC. Uh, the, so four elements, the fact that it's multi-stakeholder, all the people that I mentioned a, minute, a few minutes ago, uh, uh, you know, will be uh, uh, welcome and engaged and contributing uh, to the evolution of EOSC. Uh, key choices, openness, of course, and what, are there any limits to openness? We know that there are privacy, security, property. So, uh, but still it's as open as possible, as close as, as necessary. Uh, the FAIR, I won't get into details here. Uh, it, it's clear that it belongs to our uh, values and principles. And uh, the, the, the fourth element, which uh, I will focus a little bit more in this presentation is the fact that uh, EOSC will be a federation of infrastructures. So existing infrastructure, of course, will continue to evolve and develop and and uh, uh, provide more and more services to, to, to scientists. And the purpose of EOSC is to federate uh, those infrastructures uh, to provide a value add, an extra value add for the, for the scientists. Uh, we, today, we won't get into the details of the next two parts, technical challenges and societal challenges, where work is uh, ongoing. Uh, at the moment to try to have a, again, a status of where we stand, uh, identify the gaps and, uh, and then identify priorities. I'm sure that uh, most of the discussion during the summer will focus on uh, identifying those priorities, agreeing because we may have different opinions on what should be the priorities and merge them, uh, coalesce them into uh, a multi-annual roadmap, which will be part seven. And, together with timeline. The document will end with the expected impacts uh, uh, and the, the role of science uh, in the implementation of Europe's strategy and, and uh, will end by um, opening uh, all this effort uh, towards to the whole world uh, in part nine. So this is the, the table of contents as it is put together at the moment. Next slide, please. Okay, very briefly, uh, uh, Catherine showed, this is the link to Catherine's first presentation, uh, initial presentation on the objective three. Uh, and, uh, and the fact that uh, after, you know, trying to, uh, you know, ag not agree, well, to share uh, the, our uh, vision of EOSC, uh, you know, here, this slide summarizes uh, the fact that EOSC is about uh, people, mostly scientists and others uh, that have to play into the game, uh, trying to leverage uh, the ever-growing uh, available uh, data or scientific results in general and data in particular that need special attention and share them uh, within infrastructure. Today, uh, you know, this vision has its limits that are described in the, in the barriers and the objective of EOSC is to uh, enhance the situation by uh, making open science the new normal, uh, providing the standards, tools, and services that will allow uh, uh, researchers to find, access, and reuse interoperable results, and uh, federate the infrastructures so that uh, open science can be developed on the whole uh, available set of information uh, uh, across Europe in the first place and the world in the second place with uh, benefits uh, of course, for science to do better science, uh, industry develop innovative and so uh, uh, innovative services and products, and by having federated in, in infrastructure, being able to uh, impact uh, to address a societal challenge as scientists. So next slide. So putting in context, uh, it's so as you all know, the we're 
we, at the end of the year, we will move from uh, the Horizon 2020 program, which we've lived in, into for seven years, to a new program called Horizon Europe uh, from 2021 to 2027. And uh, this, uh, or this program has, uh, will have partnership. They were already partnership with Horizon 2020, but when, such a, when a program starts uh, like that new vision or new uh, you know, mechanisms are put in place in order to uh, organize partnerships. This slide presents the current, uh, I think, 47 uh, existing partnerships. Uh, the color, different, uh, they are different types, so the color describes various types uh, uh, of partnership for Horizon Europe. And next slide. And among this, uh, the grand total of uh, 49 uh, partnerships in the works as we speak, uh, and of course should be ready when Horizon Europe uh, starts uh, uh, January 1st, 2021. The European Open Science, uh, Open Science Cloud, EOSC, is the only cross-pillar uh, cross uh, partnership. Pillar refers to the, the three main roles, uh, main goals of the uh, uh, Horizon Europe, uh, better science, uh, um, societal challenges, and uh, uh, innovation. And uh, some of, depending upon what they are, they are focusing more on one or the other except for EOSC, which is the only one that goes across since its impact, it's on all scientists and all infrastructure uh, uh, existing uh, by definition. So it's the integrating, uh, integrating factor of the rise of the digital age that makes uh, EOSC such a cross-pillar partnership. Okay, How, even if it's a cross-pillar one, it's a partnership like any other, so it has to be, uh, so the uh, partnership proposal described by uh, by uh, uh, Catherine, uh, briefly described by Catherine in, in the initial presentation, has to be applied uh, to to EOS. So next slide. Okay, so I'll go fast on this one. Uh, the so this is the, again a link now forward uh, after the session there is a session on the sustainability which will present all the details of the partnership uh, just uh, the exercise here is to look at whether there is the sria uh, acronym on this slide there is on the left hand side so it will be one of the mission of the eosc association the eosc legal entity which will be created at the beginning of next year to uh, be the owner of the SRIA. So the SRIA we're developing now before the association is in uh, is in uh, is is working uh, is just the bootstrap, the initial one, the one dollar. And then uh, over the seven years uh, of the partnership, uh, the association will be in charge of evolving the SRIA as uh, work progresses and and uh, deployment progresses and so on. So. Uh, so this is the link uh, between this presentation on the SRIA and the evolution of the structure around EOSC. Next slide. Now let's focus. Next slide, please, thank you. Let's focus. Uh, uh, it's impossible to cover in, in one hour the whole range. So uh, I cho uh, since we're at the very beginning, uh, I chose to highlight uh, the, the part four, values and principle. And and uh, and even in particular, uh, focus on the federation part. So next slide. Okay, multi-stakeholder I already mentioned when I uh, uh, addresses the table of contents and the fact that the document is for everybody, every actor, every stakeholder should find uh, a, a, the document as its reference. Uh, the two key principles: openness uh, and fair. Uh, will be covered in many other uh, instances, including in during this day. And uh, to end this uh, presentation, I will uh, focus on the uh, Federation of Infrastructure. So next slide. So I will first uh, say a word on the minimum viable EOSC, and uh, this will have to be connected to the session uh, uh, shared by Carol towards uh, in breakout three, which is about minimum valuable EOSC. So, all right, so we're playing with the, 
vocabulary here. So let's start uh, next slide with the minimum viable EOSC. So the minimum viable EOSC has been defined in one of the sustainability working group document, the current one called the Tinman document. And that sentence says uh, minimum viable EOSC will enable the federation of research data infrastructure for the benefit of publicly funded researchers accessing openly available data. And the document goes on by highlighting the, the three key components that are necessary for that to happen, a mechanism for naming and locating data and services, mechanism for discovery of and access to data and services, and a common framework for managing user identity and access. Next slide. So here we're, we're in the priority uh, line of thought, right? We all have uh, a maximum valuable uh, EOSC in mind. You know, we all have, a good, depending upon our role, our job, and our expertise, our, our <coughs> vision, we have, uh, ele we have elements of EOSC that we feel are necessary. And one day, that's the vision part, uh, this maximum valuable EOSC will exist. The question uh, of addre uh, addressed here uh, with the minimum viable EOSC is where do we start? Right, so it's a priority question. It's not a question of whether one is better than the other. Uh, of course, we want to be on the right hand side of the slide. The question is by which uh, action do we start? So that's the, the, the question of the minimum viable, uh, viable EOSC. And in the session this afternoon, uh, Karel will extend by saying, okay, it's one thing to be viable, it's another to bring value. So this nuance will be, uh, this not nuance, but this, uh, this difference will be addressed during the session this afternoon. Next slide. Uh, defining what the minimum viable EOS should have, the same document, the Tin Man document, highlights um, uh, a number of uh, property that, uh, uh, that uh, the minimum viable EOS should have. And two of them I have highlighted, they are the architecture uh, will be covered in the two architecture breakout session, one on AI uh, uh, right after and the, uh, as a second uh, breakout and, and another on uh, PID uh, in the third uh, breakout. Next slide. Okay, and now the focus on the EOSC interoperability framework, which uh, as uh, uh, Catherine said, has been published uh, yesterday. So you go, so you have the links in Catherine's presentation, you go to the liaison platform and uh, the first entry in the, the, or the last entry, uh, uh, days from yesterday, and uh, points you to the EOSC interoperability framework. And, I, and Catherine also showed you the direct link to go to the, to the document if you want to. Uh, so next slide. Uh, okay, uh, Oscar? Uh, Oscar? Oscar, are you here? I saw you joining. Ah, okay. So uh, I, mean, I I was trying to, to unmute myself, yeah, but uh, I mean, it had to be done by Sarah, so, probably. So uh, okay. I asked, uh, just to intro, I asked Oscar was uh, in charge of, uh, uh, was part of the, the team who developed the EOSC interoperability framework. So uh, I found, uh, he, he was nice enough to reorganize his schedule to be able to present. So I, I leave the floor to Oscar to present uh, the, the, the document that was published yesterday. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jean-Francois. So, I mean, as, uh, as it has been commented already, uh, we made available this, uh, this document yeah, uh, uh, on Friday. I mean, and it was already published uh, that during this weekend, so that, I mean, you will have time also uh, to, to read it afterwards. Uh, and, I mean, we would really value uh, comments on it. Uh, basically, I mean, what we have been working on uh, is on a first version of the document uh, where uh, we have been discussing which are the main interoperability layers that we have to, to take into account. Uh, then uh, requirements and recommendations, and we will be asking you, I mean, like for a very first initial feedback on some of them that uh, we will be presenting. And then finally, we have uh, already pro made a, an initial proposal of the model and components uh, that such an interoperability framework uh, should have. Yeah? So these are like the three core sections that the document has. Uh, next slide, then. Yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, I mean, in terms of the layers, 
we are uh, following uh, the idea that has been already proposed in other interoperability frameworks, like the European interoperability framework, uh, which is mostly focused on uh, public administrations. Um, uh, basically, I mean, we identify four layers uh, uh, coming from the bottom, the technical interoperability part, where we are mostly uh, discussing on authentication, authorization, PADs, schemas, APIs, and so on. Then we have the semantic interoperability layer, where all the usual semantic artifacts, yeah, uh, the need for metadata, uh, the need for ontologies, the salary, and so on, uh, is identified, and uh, we discuss on uh, which should be the elements, yeah, that we should have in such a layer. And then we have the two top layers, which are those related to uh, agreements, yeah, between organizations, yeah, on organizational interoperability and also legal interoperability. Uh, in the current document, uh, we have mainly focused on the three. Uh, layers on the on the bottom, technical, semantic, and organizational, and the legal interoperability is currently underway, uh, so it is not uh, filled in in the in the current document, uh, and it will be done by um, uh, the, the an organization uh, that will be awarded uh, a tender uh, related to to this study of legal interoperability. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so now I mean like uh, we have like a a list yeah, of uh, some of the requirements, recommendations that we have identified. Yeah? And, I mean, I will only try to highlight uh, the most important elements yeah, that you can see over here. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be exhaustive. Yeah? Uh, if you go later into the document, you will be able to see all the, all the details. But basically, I mean, like the main ideas is that we are uh, fostering the use of open specifications uh, to ensure technical interoperability. That's quite common in all interoperability frameworks. Uh, defining common security and privacy frameworks, uh, also the need for AAI processes that is uh, common across communities, so that it is easy uh, to move from one community to another, and I mean, like to, uh, to do this cross-domain interoperability that we are always looking for. Uh, the need for service level agreements is also relevant, and this will be also appearing again on the organizational interoperability layer. Uh, availability of data sources that could be generic or community-based, uh, so that, I mean, we will allow data integration. The uh, need also for uh, having a way to uh, search for data sets. And when we are talking about data sets and, and data in general in this document, we are also referring to any other research artifact. Yeah? Uh, I mean, it could be software, it could be uh, scientific workflows, it could be open hardware designs. I mean, uh, basically anything that we are using in the context of, uh, of research. And finally, we are also considering, I mean, the need for PID policies. And I mean, uh, as you can see, I mean, there are connections with all the other uh, uh, streams of work that are being done and that will be discussed uh, today. Yeah. So this is for the technical layer. If we move now into the semantic layer, next slide. Um, over here, I mean, you see that there are uh, a, a few more recommendations, uh, but they are all focused on the need for having uh, semantic artifacts uh, that are well understood inside communities and also across communities and allow us to uh, perform this uh, uh, or achieve this interoperability at the level that we can achieve it. Yeah, I mean, like uh, we are, and also the document is quite clear in this context. Uh, we are. Uh, always uh, discussing that uh, achieving full interoperability is, uh, I mean, something that we would love to have, but uh, there will be different degrees, and uh, uh, these are the elements that we also need in this context, in the semantic layer. So we are talking about the need for clear and precise definitions for concepts, uh, even the need for having a classification of research disciplines. This is a minor theme, but I mean, it has also been identified. Uh, the need to have good documentation uh, of, the, of the semantic artifacts. Sometimes they just come as an implementation, but we don't have sufficient documentation. Uh, the fact that they should be fair, as discussed on the, on the fair principles, is not only for data, but also for the semantic artifacts, the metadata, and so on. Uh, that they should be preferably open. And uh, I mean, over here, we point to W3C, where all the recommendations are open. Uh, uh, that we need to have repositories uh, of semantic artifacts. Some communities already have them, and we have identified them in the, in the document. I mean, not trying to be exhaustive, but giving some examples. Uh, but we need 
these repositories and governance models, governance frameworks for those repositories. Who maintains uh, terms? How they can be maintained? How they can uh, all these uh, semantic artifacts be maintained uh, uh, in general? Uh, there should be a possibility of doing extensibility. This means that if I belong to a community and my artifacts, my data is described according to some ontologies, some semantic artifacts, it should be also possible to have other communities coming in and using their own ontologies to describe the objects that we have. Why? Because this will allow also this cross-domain interoperability. Again, discovery of uh, federated research data and metadata. And uh, in general, I mean, as we have been discussing, uh, we on, not only refer to data as data sets, but also to any other uh, research uh, uh, artifacts that, that we use during, during our research. Finally, if we move into the, the next one, we would have the organizational layer where we have a few less recommendations. Some of the previous recommendations for the technical and semantic uh, layers are applicable over here. Uh, for instance, like the need for having a governance yeah, of uh, all these uh, artifacts or uh, the need uh, to have uh, proper procedures yeah, on uh, authentication and authorization and so on. Uh, but over here, I mean, we mostly focus on talking about the rules of participation uh, that should be completed with aspects related to interoperability according to our uh, analysis yeah, of the current uh, uh, documents that we have. And finally, in terms of the services, uh, we are also recommending over here the uh, importance of having organizations uh, complying with uh, standardized data formats, vocabularies, their corresponding metadata, and with some level of quality, yeah, which are uh, quite relevant in this context. That said, if we move into the models, into the next slide, uh, uh, there is a, a final part in the, uh, in the document which is related to the models and components. Yeah? As we have said, the basic components of the framework are the semantic artifacts, yeah? I mean, like ontologies, the SAURI, shared data models, and so on. We are quite um, like a wide or vague yeah, in, the, in the way that we, we describe semantic artifacts in this context, so as to allow any uh, artifact that uh, allows uh, describing uh, agreements yeah, between uh, uh, different organizations, different communities, and so on. Uh, we also say that semantic artifacts should be available in repositories. And uh, these descriptions should have uh, or should be following agreed metadata frameworks and elements, yeah? which could be at the generic uh, cross-disciplinary level, I mean, talking generally about methods, data, software, and so on, or using a specific community-based interoperability frameworks. Uh, we use the term digital object to refer to all these research artifacts, and all the different levels of metadata uh, will be associated to those objects uh, in order to uh, to be, uh, I mean, like uh, more easily transferable uh, from uh, one community to another or e even inside the same community. Mm -hmm. I think that this is all from the, I mean, like general description of this document. Obviously, I mean, you, you, you have the document available to, to go further in details and we will be really happy to get uh, additional, additional comments on them uh, on the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. I think that that's all. Next slide. Yeah, I think that Jean-Francois is your... Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Oscar. And uh, so just to, to finish, uh, so it was just a reminder, this slide, I maintained this, this slide because this shows you uh, that this work in, uh, work in progress. I mean, we are collecting the contributions on part five and six uh, uh, in order to determine the priorities for part seven and so forth. And all of that will be uh, uh, discussed in, in the coming uh, month uh, to be ready uh, in October. Uh, okay, and, and also the, the fact that we, y y it even shows you to the, the point uh, we are in, in order to get organized uh, to, uh, to be able to work together um, as, a co as a community. Uh, next slide. So now we're coming to the discussion. Uh, Sex, uh, session uh, or part of this. So uh, uh, before we get into, into the Slido uh, uh, mechanism, is there any pressing uh, question at the moment by anybody? I know we have covered a lot of uh, there a lot of elements. 
uh, a lot of topic. Or maybe we start. What do you suggest, Sarah? Should we start with the slider? Yeah, I think in the meantime, I can put on the slider. Okay, so we are, we've prepared very general questions. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we have prepared very general question. And the first one uh, is related to the minimum viable EOSC. Um, so, and the definition that was, uh, uh, that came from the sustainability working group document. Uh, so, Sarah, do you have problems? Yeah, uh, I'm just uh, opening the slide up. You should see the slide though, right? Yes. Okay, so now uh, it looks like we're we're on our way. We see the the answers coming in. Yeah, and I've seen that Oscar has addressed a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know, Oscar, if you want to further comment. Okay, so it looks like Oscar. It looks like there there are generic question in the yeah you've answered already, but uh, on the mm -hmm. on the focus and the and the openness. Um, so do you, do you want to yeah. provide a first round of feedback? Uh, I think that we can we can probably first uh, start with the the MVE part, yeah, because it is the yeah, current okay. yes. um, the current question, yeah, and then we can go go back into the the original questions that I have tried to start addressing in the in the chat, but I mean they will come off with Slido as well, yeah, Slido as well, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, so, let, let, let's start with the you're right, let's start so. I will repeat. Uh, I've been. I've seen that there, there's been question in the chat. So a minimum viable EOSC will enable the federation of research data infrastructure. So that's the federation for the benefit of publicly funded researchers accessing openly available data. Publicly funded researchers accessing openly available data. The the message here is that if we uh, in particular, if we start with openly available data, it, well, it's simpler with this definition to get to, to some sort of low hanging fruits, right? So that is, that's things that we could develop and so forth and reach a, a level of deployment uh, uh, of EOSC that will be very significant and from which we will be able to draw lessons to move forward, right? So that's the, the idea of the minimum viable EOSC. So, and that's the question which is running in the slide at the moment. So, I s here we go. Thank you. Um, and it will allow to develop the three core elements which are mentioned at the bottom of the slide that you have in front of you, a mechanism for naming and locating data and services, a mechanism for discovery of and access to data and services, common framework for managing user identity and access. You need those, once you have those three mechanisms, you can deliver uh, the minimum vi viable EOSC and start to have success stories, uh, you know, real example of uh, multidisciplinary uh, development, uh, uh, example within a given community of better uh, uh, communication exchange and, and uh, cooperation between scientists based in various uh, places uh, in uh, across Europe uh, and, and so on. So, uh, so the, the question is: Do you see that as a uh, as a first step? in developing the the full EOSC, which of course uh, will address more complex problems, including addressing the issues of, uh, of uh, privacy, security, and, and property, which we can work on now simultaneously, but not deploy, right? The, 
the minimum viable EOS refers to deployment, right? So uh, the Slido gives a uh, uh, yeah, majority for the yes, probably some uncertainty or clarification or, uh, you know, when I, I chose to have the maybe so that, uh, you know, people uh, who are not clear enough uh, uh, on the question can uh, express uh, their, their opinion and a few no's. Yeah, there are a couple of comments in the chat. Okay. Okay, so on, um, yeah, so I see a question on implementation. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, you know, for example, on those three mechanisms, uh, there are issues related to kids, uh, issues related to AI and so forth. So they will be covered. Yeah, it's intentional that at this moment, in this session, we don't get into implementations, but please, uh, uh, attend the corresponding sessions where you will have answers on those uh, uh, on the initial um, steps towards implementation, both on AI and PIDs, for example. Uh, seems to me that there are necessary simple services not sufficient. So, in my view, they are not sufficient to qualify what is. Oh, Tiziana, uh, do you want to extend your comment? Uh, is it possible to give the floor to Tiziana? Absolutely. Yes. I'm unmuting you, Tiziana. You can speak now. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, giving the chance to, to ask the question. So my remark is about uh, what is uh, the minimum viable ESC. So what uh, I notice in this definition is that these are necessary support services, but they don't provide the end user value as they are. So in my view, the minimum viable ESC to be attractive should provide user facing services uh, in order to address the users, and these are actually support services. Yeah, uh, so yes, uh, I guess we agree. Uh, if we move to next slide, uh, the, the next slide of the, of the deck, uh, it's clear. We, we, so the three mechanisms are, have been put forward in the previous slide because they are necessary, right? And, and they are not there. So it, Developing services, if you don't have the, the, the three mechanisms or, or the common platform, it's necessary. I agree with you, uh, Tiziana. Uh, and uh, in order to be sufficient, <laughs> so, to, so to define completely what the minimum viable is, yes, uh, the mechanisms do not, and that's why the words mechanism and framework are used, because it's clear that with a mechanism, you don't have a service, right? You don't deliver. So, however, we need the mechanisms to be agreed upon so that people can develop the services. So we agree on that. Uh, other questions? The MV, the, I'm sorry, I have to subsample. There are too many. Um, the MV seems rather resource provider oriented. The minimum product should have at least one service for the customer, the researcher. Uh, well, again, uh, so I think it's the same answer as the one I just made to Tiziana. The, yes, the mechanisms, uh, well, the definition is user-oriented since it's, it's a publicly funded researchers uh, access to openly available data. So the definition itself is user-directed. The three mechanisms at the bottom, uh, the two mechanisms and the frameworks, yes, uh, they are resource providers. So, uh, and I think I've answered answering uh, Tiziana. Um, I, I don't think I will be able to cover all of those. Yeah. 
I suggest Jean-François to ask people to raise their hands if they want to express any remark. Otherwise, we move to the next question, maybe. Yeah, and I then think... there will be still time in the closing plenary to address exactly. the questions. So. Yes, maybe we were too greedy by trying to address multiple topics at the same time. Anyway, let's go. Uh, let's. Uh, get to the second question about the, so if you can show the requirements um, uh, in the in the PowerPoint part. So this one is on the technical layer and then there are three, right? Uh, this one, so the, the question is, um, well, do you agree with the, uh, with this, uh, state uh, in, in this document, EOSC uh, uh, Interoperability Framework 1.0. Uh, Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I must, I cannot, uh, I mean, like, uh, I agree with Rafael, I mean, that there are, uh, I mean, the, the, there is more need to, to digest all the, all the requirements, uh, but I already saw several reactions, yeah, when uh, I was doing the presentation. I have tried to compile them in order to, um, uh, I mean, to, to provide a, a, an initial uh, piece of feedback over here. And in any case, I think that I mean we will be happy to to receive more feedback on this when you when you go and uh, and and go through them, yeah. Where there are more examples as well. So there was uh, one comment uh, that was, uh, or a couple of comments related to open specifications and what we understood by open specifications. And basically, I mean like what we are trying to uh, to say in the interoperability framework uh, document is mostly that in all aspects, not only in the technical layer, but also when we are dealing with the semantic layer, uh, the need, uh, I mean, like, we would value much more having uh, specifications that are open rather than uh, those that may be closed, yeah? And they may be more difficult to access or to understand uh, by communities that are not um, uh, using uh, uh, that specific uh, model or uh, or service or, or, or so on, yeah? So we have examples, yeah? I mean, we have put an example of W3C. Uh, there was also another example on the chat on HL7, uh, which are open specifications. However, we have also ISO. And uh, we really have to, um, uh, to balance, yeah? To, to have a, a good balance between the specifications that are open and those ones that are not open. So we understand that uh, a, a nice requirement would be to use as many open specifications as possible. Yeah, that's like a general, a general comment that we make over there. There was also some uh, comment uh, on SLAs, on service level agreements, uh, where we say specifically that they should be easy to understand by, by users. And I mean, I had a comment also uh, related to that, uh, the fact that it may be also nice to have them uh, as machine understandable. And I, I, I think that I agree with that uh, comment. We will probably include some references to, to that, yeah, that uh, they were not included uh, before. And then, I mean, I think that it was Isabel who was uh, commenting that we were not covering services and processing uh, in, these, um, 
a list of requirements. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is the case. Probably we can stress it uh, a little bit uh, uh, more. Uh, but uh, I mean, when we are talking about uh, all the typical or potential research artifacts, we are not excluding the possibility of having processing services. And we are not excluding the possibility of describing the services that are being offered by, I mean, I don't know, HPC centers or, or anything alike. Uh, probably we are lacking some examples and they may be, I mean, it may be nice to have some additional examples coming, coming from those areas, but we are not excluding them. I mean, we are not just referring to data objects uh, that uh, need to be shared, but uh, we also consider the service uh, um, processing services part. But I mean, happy to, to get any, any feedback on, on those ones, any, any proposal on how to, uh, how to I mean, stress uh, that part in the, in, in the document. There are some comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's, uh, so we have another 10 to 15 minutes, is mm -hmm. it? Um, so I don't know, Oscar, how would you? Yeah. So I, I'm, just, I'm just checking there, I mean, like uh, Costas was commenting again, I mean, in, in the topic of open standards, that sometimes, I mean, there are also other standards here or there are uh, things available that are easier or better to use or more available. I mean. Uh, I may agree. I mean, if they are, uh, uh, what what we are really like commenting over here is that we have a preference for open standards, but we are not really saying that open standards are the only thing that uh, should be considered. I'm not sure. I mean, if uh, there is a lot of controversy on that one, I mean, we may try to get back and see whether whether we have to either rewrite it or or even even remove it. I mean, I think that that that's I can see that uh, that there's controversy over there. Yeah. And uh, I saw, I mean, from Nacho Blanqueria that uh, he's commented that, I mean, processing data transfer storage, they are important to outline. So I will, I mean, I, I'm happy, I mean, when, when you, if you have time to go through the, um, uh, through the document and see whether these aspects are not sufficiently covered in the, um, in the actual text. I mean, that there is more text than what we are presenting over here. Uh, I would be happy to, to get some additional feedback from, from that area, yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem at all. Uh, I've posted the link to the uh, EOS plat uh, liaison okay. platform, and and you're one, one click away from the from the actual document for those mm -hmm. who wanted yeah. to get access to it in real time. Uh, I take the opportunity, Jan, uh, ask a question uh, on the MVP and uh, Bob uh, answered uh, already. Uh, it's clear that at, at the very end, uh, the, the user is the scientist, right? I mean, EOS could only be a success when, uh, you know, scientists uh, uh, deliver data and, uh, and use data from other scientists or so, or use, or you can even generalize the word scientist. So, uh, and Bob provided uh, uh, to Jan an initial answer in the chat on, uh, on the effort in this direction. So back to, uh, let, let's, I think it's time to move, Oscar, what do you think? Should we move to the, yep. mm -hmm. uh, to the next? Um, So next slide, here, oh, yes, Oop. One, uh, one more. Oh, yeah, the question on, on model and components. So I think that over here, it is also important that um, in the document, there is much more um, discussion, obviously, on the, on the actual models here yeah, that we are uh, proposing initially. And I mean, this will require some additional reading, yeah? But um, I mean, we would like to understand whether these, like general, very general points 
that we are making uh, over here, I mean, whether you agree with them or, or not, they are mostly focused on the semantic interoperability part. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it, the questions are probably too general at this yeah, at, mm -hmm. at, at this stage, uh, Oscar. Mm -hmm. So, any specific? Yeah, any specific feedback, I mean, on these or th things that we should clearly consider examples uh, would be also uh, relevant. Again, I mean, once that you uh, I mean, I hope that many of you will have time to, to go through the document. Uh, once that you go through them, I mean, I hope that uh, we can receive further feedback uh, and more fine grain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, I, mm -hmm. uh, I I understand that this is uh, this is the limit. I mean, we've all learning of how to manage a group of uh, two hundred and seventy four uh, people uh, in uh, in such a conference, and um, so. Uh, at least it was an attempt <laughs> to to do it. Uh, you have uh, you know basic uh, information links to more detailed uh, information. So I I think we should probably I I don't see any more uh, input in the in the chat. So maybe we should uh, close here. Any general comment by anybody uh sarah uh, uh, the only conclusion the only conclusion which can be done that this agreement is a very small minority if it is there at all lack of details is choosing yeah exactly i think the, the question the, the questions were uh, th this one, the last was too uh, high level. 